With the new Journeys revamp coming to Conan in Age of Sorcery Chapter 3, you'll be able to get your hands on some nice rewards. Today I'll be looking through all the rewards you'll be able to attain. For reference, these rewards are the same across Siptar and the Exalt Lands, aside from one exception. Siptar does not have access to the Mountaineer Journey, as it is specific to the Exalt Lands. Instead, Siptar has the Delver Journey, unique to the island, as a replacement. I'll mention that specific reward when I get to it. Additionally, some of Siptar's journeys are named slightly differently and have different map-specific steps, but ultimately grant the same reward. I'll be going through the rewards in the order they're shown in the journey menu. So, without further ado, let's get started. Survivor grants you a supply materials cache full of useful resources. Survival Shelter grants you a survival kit, which contains food, a water skin, a bedroll, healing wraps, and some other stuff to help you get started. Warrior gives the recipe to make brawler hand wraps and five weapon repair kits. The hand wraps are basically just gloves with an armor value of two. Soldier gives you the recipe to make a sharp iron sword, a one-handed blade with damage comparable to the two-handed sword of the same quality, though with less armor penetration. Rogue gives you the ability to make balanced iron poniards, a slight upgrade from the regular ones. Archer gives you 50 iron head arrows and the recipe for a powerful hunting bow, Again, a slight upgrade from the regular and improved one. Sharpshooter gives you the recipe for a powerful Hyrcanian bow. Again, another upgrade from regular Hyrcanian. Tanner allows you to craft the improved Tanner's table for 30 shaped wood and 50 iron bars. Alchemist grants you 10 glass flasks. Healer grants you 10 pure aloe extract. Armorer gives you 5 armor patch kits. Expert Armorer gives you 5 advanced armor patch kits. Master Armorer gives you the recipe to create perfected exiled armors, a more expensive version of light, medium, and heavy armors that are an upgrade from the epic level 60 versions. Tinkerer gives you the recipe to craft prying kits at the Tinkerer's bench. Blacksmith grants you one weapon repair kit. Steelsmith gives you 50 steel fire and the recipe for perfected steel weapons. These weapons are better than regular steel, but not as good as hardened steel. Hardened Steel Smith gives you the recipe for perfected hardened steel weapons, which are better than hardened steel, but not as good as star metal. Warsmith grants you the recipe for the repairing grindstone. You can fill this with oil and use it to repair your weapons for free, at the cost of slightly reducing the total durability of your weapon with each use. Mason grants you yet another cache of supply materials. Homesteader allows you to craft the reinforced wooden box, an improved version of the regular storage box. Master Mason, again, gives you a cache of supply materials. Thrall Taker allows you to craft the Purple Lotus Orb, an AoE throwable weapon that will knock out NPCs caught in the cloud. Beastmaster grants you 5 Shade Bloom and the ability to craft the Rat Catcher's Whistle, used to summon a pet rat. Overlord gives you the recipe to craft the Slaver's Hood, a legendary black hood with pretty good stats. Outrider allows you to craft a Reinforced Lance, which is better than the regular lance, but worse than the epic lance. Farmer grants you 10 potent compost. Brewer grants you 5 curative mixture, an item used to cure the effects of hangovers. Chef grants you 50 cuts of exquisite meat. Master Chef allows you to craft the charcoal kiln, a smaller version of the kiln furnace. It can smelt and cook, unlike the kiln furnace, but it can only be used with charcoal. Mountaineer on the Exile Lands lets you craft Spider Climb Boots, which give you a stamina bonus and are slightly better than regular climbing boots. This feat is replaced by Delver on Siptar, which grants you the ability to craft Forlorn Weapons, which are epic tier and sit just above Star Metal. Potion Maker grants you 20 Glass Flasks. Dismantler lets you craft the Improved Dismantling Bench for 150 Brick and 100 Insulated Wood. Purge Defender grants you the ability to craft Golden Stygian Raider armor in both regular and epic variants. Raider will allow you to craft Ironstone Siege Boulders, a new ammunition for the trebuchet that costs 75 Ironstone. Sorcerer grants you 5 failed Sorceress pages and the ability to finally craft the Acheronian Legate Primus set in regular and epic variants. Artificer grants you the recipe to craft Silver Jewelry. Adventurer gives you 1 Fragment of Power. Cartographer grants you the ability to craft the epic quality Valeria Sword. Dungeon Delver gives you the recipe to make Ranger and Island Ranger armor in both regular and epic variants. Warpainter gives you a die pack, which contains small amounts of lots of different dies. Acolyte grants you a supply materials cache. And finally, High Priest grants you 10 incense placeables. And there are all the rewards for the new Journeys revamp. 
If you'd like to know more about the armors, I have a dedicated video on those and the new Kurak set, which goes in depth on their design and stats. Overall, this revamp offers some pretty good rewards. Some are clearly geared towards newer players, namely the supply caches and such, though I'm sure experienced players won't say no to them either. There's some pretty interesting stuff in here, like the improved tanners and dismantling bench, and the new version of the kiln furnace too. Some things are a bit off, namely how much of the system just gives you crafting recipes, but I can kind of understand the logic behind that for giving new players things to aim for outside of the boundaries of the journey system. Thank you for watching, and as always, I'm interested to hear what you guys think of these rewards in the comments below. I'm still working on some other stuff for the Age of Sorcery Chapter 3, and I'll be covering the Battle Pass and the Bizarre Editions when the update goes live, which at the time of recording is slated for March 14th. As always, a massive thank you to our esteemed Coffee Cultists for supporting the channel over on Patreon. Again, thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you soon.